Ищите, как оказалось, что вот на себя брал. Что мама так Она мне писала, что ты надо получать. Где Here are the photographs printed from the publication MASH. As you can see, they are homemade. We spoke to the mother of Alina Kirova, Vika. Alina was just 16 years old. As you can see, she was very beautiful. She attended a modeling school, painted, and of course, as her mother said, she was a happy child. She has a seven-year-old sister. Her mom received a phone call and was told there is something going on at the technical college. At first, they said that it appeared that everything was all right with their group. But then she and her friend Vika, you also see her picture here, could not be found. The family, of course, is grieving. It is difficult for them to talk. Her aunt from Murmansk in Russia, who also came urgently, also talks about how joyful Alina was. Her friend Vika Demchuk died too. There was hope that Vika would survive. She was transported to Moscow via plane. She was in a coma, but her heart stopped. She was expected to be buried on Saturday. Anna Zhuravleva was 20. We spoke to some people who knew her, who say she taught dance. She was meant to be getting married. She was a little older, a high achiever, and her family is having a very difficult time right now. Ksenia Voldina was studying law. Earlier, we got in touch with some people in her group who spoke of how energetic a person she was. This girl is the oldest daughter of a classmate of mine. And this girl is my neighbor's niece. It seems like everyone in town has a friend or acquaintance in here. It does look like that. This photo here is of Alexander Moiseenko. He taught computer science and was helping save the students. Svetlana and Anastasia Baklanova, mother and daughter, they were both teachers and both died. We also spoke to the family of Vlad Lazarev. His mother is also having a very difficult time. We spoke to the stepfather and he is also getting his emotions under control. Ruden Jaraev is a Crimean Tatar. He was buried on his first day. He would have been 17 years old in November. My nephew, Ruden Jaraev, he was more than my nephew. He was my son. I named him, held him to my chest. He was going to be 15 years old. After ninth grade, he went there. He went to study to become an electrician. Every 15-20 minutes, the list of the injured were being updated. He wasn't on the list of injured. He's not among those alive. As soon as I left, I see the ritual series and my hands started going numb and my heart started palpitating straight away. I just felt that he was there. And then, just when I got home at 1.45 in the afternoon, they tell me, we've just identified Rudan. He was at the epicenter of the explosion. Eyewitnesses say that all the doctors, everyone who could have, came to the city hospital to help the wounded, but there were not enough ambulances. People were driven out using public minibuses. There were also not enough free hands, and so they turned to the medical college for help. Third and fourth years from the college, this one right behind me, they were asked to also provide assistance to the wounded. Just like that, these 18-year-old teenagers came face to face with this terrible tragedy. And I remind you, we are in annexed Crimea, and they speak with caution. It's better not to risk it. And that's why this girl who is studying to be a nurse and spent several hours helping the wounded agreed to speak with us on the condition that we don't show her face. The patrol car arrives with police, she tells me. They brought girls who were not seriously injured and started taking the gurneys to the waiting room. This, they said that they will then bring the ones in a serious condition. At first they said it was a gas explosion. We looked at these kids and they didn't have any burns. They asked the third and fourth year students for help. The elevator was not coping. There were many who suffered and our boys just started taking the stretchers and carrying them to the sixth floor. That's where the operating room is. They started carrying them there and assigning them to departments, trauma center, neurosurgery. Doctors came from all the hospitals, from hospital number three, number two and number one. Everyone helped, the students, the doctors and the nurses and orderlies. It's difficult because you think that you and the girls that brought them in 
could have been in their place. They were asking, please call my mom and tell her that I love her very much. Parents would come and ask, are these names on the list? But we weren't able to answer. We weren't able to say anything because we didn't know. Those parents who asked, we later found out that their children had died. We didn't go to class for two days. We were that scared. Some people say that there were four gunmen and that they are free. Some say that they died, though. I would never wish this on anyone, for the children to go to school in the morning and then get a call saying that they are gone. It's very difficult. On our way to Kerch, we were reading many conspiracy theories linking the incident to Ukraine and to Crimean Tatars on forums and messaging channels. We were reading about a city in panic. But when we arrived, we saw first of all that Kerch is a big graveyard. People go from one cemetery to another. Those who buried their children, family and loved ones on Friday are going to burn their children's classmates and others close to them. All of this is continuing, but many questions remain. How could such a slight boy organize an explosion and assemble an explosive device on his own, and then for a long time shoot at all the children in his surrounds, seeing the blood everywhere? These are unanswered questions. But everyone understands everything. There are no such rumors. If you spend several hours at a morning ceremony, all the time you hear grave silence and the awful scraping of shovels, digging and filling graves. People understand everything. Today, Vika Demchuk was buried. They tried taking her to Moscow. The girl was in coma, but they didn't manage to save her. Another terrible news. Russian and local media report that Vika's boyfriend jumped out of the window overnight. He left a note saying, I love you. Now he's in a critical condition. So the story does not end here. We also know that 45 people remain in hospitals. Of them, 25 are children, teenagers. Ten of them are in critical condition, so the tragedy is continuing.